Hello, welcome to this North Star Controller segment routing learning bite. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. This learning bite is going to focus on configuring the Juno CLI to support segment routing. We're going to modify the IGP to support segment routing, and we're also going to add some knobs to the Juno's configuration to allow the North Star controller product from Juniper Networks to provision segment routed label switched paths. All right, this screen displays the CLI configuration required to enable segment routing support on a Juno's platform. This is a DMX router, a sample configuration. We'll connect to it in a, in a couple minutes and I'll actually run these commands and we'll, we'll configure this. The first thing it has to be enabled is you have to enable enhanced IP services on the platform. And, and, and so under the Edit Chassis Network Services branch, it's a simple set enhanced IP command that you enter. Now, to, for the functionality to take effect, you actually have to reboot the platform. So I've already done this part in the configuration on the, the node we're going to use for the demonstration. And now, uh, the protocol that we're going to use for this example is the ISIS, uh, you know, IGP. So under the Edit Protocols ISIS branch, now remember this is segment routing. We don't use RSVP, for example, or LDP to distribute any labels. We use the IGP to distribute the adjacency SIDs and the node SIDs that we will, in an MPLS forwarding plane, use for labels, right? So you, un under this branch, we're going to configure the segment routing uh, global block. So under Edit Protocols, ISIS, Source Packet Routing, I do Set, SRGB, and you configure a start label, right? And this will be the range of labels that are available to assign to your nodes for node SIDs. And in this example, I'm going to say 800,000. You get up to a million, 32,000, I think. It's a pretty high number. And then how many labels do you need, right? So you don't specify really an end range. You specify an index range. So Set, SRGB, Index Range 4,000. So this will give me a segment, segment routing global block of labels starting from 800,000 to 803,999. So I've got about 4,000 labels here. So that's how this range is defined. And then now I also need to define, this is VMX1, the node I'm doing the configuration on. Each node in a segment routing domain requires its own node segment ID, its own node SID. And it's unique throughout the domain. And so in this example, since it's VMX1, I just pick a node SID value or a node index value of 101. And then that I'm done now as far as configuring just straight regular segment routing required for Juno's platforms to forward. Now, the, the focus of, of this learning byte, it's one of a series of learning bytes that are going to kind of focus on using the North Star controller to provision label switch paths. And one of the, the one of the types of label switch paths. That a North Star controller can provision is a segment routed LSP. And, and so there's a couple of extra knobs here that I had to enable just to allow this platform, this VMX1, to interoperate with a North Star, you know, external North Star controller. And so under the edit protocols branch, I need to enable source packet routing, right? I want to enable essentially spring is what this is turning on. And I want to be able to interoperate with an external controller, an external path computation element. So I'm enabling my path computation client daemon on this VMX1 node to communicate with an external path computation element. Juno, the North Star controller platform uses a protocol called PSEP to communicate with MPLS ingress or label edge routers. And this is how label switch paths are discovered, monitored, and also provisioned. So the PSEP protocol is re required no matter what type of label switch path you would like the North Star controller to signal. But I do have to if I want the North Star controller to be able to use the PSEP protocol to provision segment routed LSPs, I have to turn it on. And, and so in this example under edit protocols PSEP, I've defined a path computation element called North Star. That's a variable you define this. But then I have to enable the spring capability inside of PSEP. Right? So that's, that's it. That's the CLI configuration required first for enabling just regular segment routing and then the last two knobs to enable segment routing with an external North Star controller. And now there's a sample network that I'm going to use uh, here for this learning byte and 
look, it's easier for you to understand this learning bite and what's going on if you kind of understand this diagram. So if you, you know, you're going to watch this in learning bite form. You can pause this and take a look at this. On the left-hand side of the diagram, here's our VMX1 node, right? That's where I was, you know, do, using to, to do, this is the node I will use to do the demonstration. But, you know, this just represents kind of a service provider WAN network. VMX2 is the node on the right-hand side of the diagram. And so in other learning bytes, I will provision a series of label switch paths using the North Star controller between the VMX1 and VMX2 nodes. And there's, uh, you know, some core routers, the P routers, the P1, P2, P3, P4. Now, what I have done that, that's not a required thing uh, in my ISIS configuration, and I'll show you this when we jump on the node, is I've manually set the adjacency SIGs. By default, in segment routing, the adjacency SIGs are automatically generated by the node to assign to its adjacencies. And when I'm doing demonstrations or labs, uh, I kind of need these values to be static so these can be repeatable screenshots, repeatable examples. And so I've taken the additional step to kind of manually set the adjacency SIDs. What we will do in the configuration is we will uh, enable segment routing support in the ISIS protocol. We'll configure the segment routing global block. We will set VMX1's node SID of 101. And then we'll kind of take a look. We'll commit the configuration and, and just take a brief look at some segment routing configuration and operational mode commands. All right, I have a, a connection into the VMX1 node. And so the first thing I'd like to show you is I'm going to run a show chassis. I'm in configuration mode. I, I just want to show you that you know one of the requirements for segment routing was to enable the enhanced IP features and then reboot the platform. It's no fun to watch a reboot uh, in a learning byte format. So I, I already did that. And so I just want, wanted you to see that that knob um, has already been configured. I'm going to navigate now to the ISIS um, branch of the configuration hierarchy. And I'm, I'm going to give you a show command so you can see kind of what's here, what's already there. Some ISIS configuration, just standard, regular ISIS configuration has been enabled, but, but not really any segment routing stuff, except I did mention to you earlier that I manually set the adjacency SIDs in this particular environment just to maintain a little bit of sanity here. And so on the Gigi001 interface, um, I've specified an adjacency SID value of the adjacency that this VMX1 node has to the P1 router. Uh, I've, I've, I've manually assigned adjacency SID of 1012. And on the Gigi002 interface on VMX1 that points to the P2 node, um, I've set a manual adjacency SID of 1022. So that's not something that's required. Uh, but if you're trying to do any type of demonstrations, or it really helped me kind of learn, be able to follow the pass, because again, if I don't specify these things manually, by default, they just, they're, they're randomly generated numbers. And, and it's a little, and every time the interface comes up or down, or you restart this platform, those numbers can change. These are the values that actually get passed around by the IGP, ISIS in this case, right? And, and, and so now let's do the required configuration for ISIS for segment routing. So I'm going to uh, set the segment routing global, the setting, oops, I'm not under the uh, correct uh, stanza here. So let me, let me do a set source packet routing, uh, segment routing global block, right? And I need to define a start label. And in our example, I'm just going to use 800,000, right? And uh, I like the number. And so that's the first start label in my segment routing global block. Now I need to set segment routing global block um, index range, right? And, and I'm just going to use 4,000. You just need enough labels in the range to cover the amount of nodes that you have in your network because, you know, these values will be used to automatically generate the node SIDs and can also be used to generate things like adjacency SIDs as well, right? So I'm going to set the, uh, the, the index range. And now the, the next step would be, I'm going to come in and set this node's uh, SID, the actual node uh, index value. So this would give me a, a node uh, segment IPv4. You can set a different one for, uh, oops, there's no IPv5, so let me, let me try that again. You, you can set a different value for you know, IPv4, and there's an IPv6 index value that you can set. But I'm just going to set it to 101, and again, this is an arbitrary value that you'll probably have you know, quite a few meetings about what, you know, what values are we going to pick. And, and now I'm really done as far as ISIS configuration. Let me run a, run a show command here. And, and so we added the source packet routing option where we set 
you know, here's my start label, here's my index range, and then here's my IPv4. This, this will be used to generate my node SID, right? And so I'm done under the uh, uh, ISIS stand, so I'm going to go up a level. And then now I need to actually enable source packet routing and, and, and configure. Now, this is for, this is North Star specific here. I'm going to configure the path computation client daemon on this BMX1 node to be able to interoperate with a, uh, an external controller, an external PCE like the North Star controller. So there's an LSP external controller command and I'm enabling the path computation client daemon on this node to interoperate with an external controller. Now I'm going to go under the PSEP, the path computation element protocol stands. And let me give you a show here. This is the, the protocol on the LSP ingress router, the BMX1 node in this case, that is configured to communicate with a, a North Star controller at 192.168.1.30. What port do I use? And then what, what features do I support? PSEP wise, and in this case, as it's currently standing, this platform doesn't support segment routing. It doesn't support spring capabilities, the actual knob. So I need to add that. So I want to, want to add to this path computation element configuration here, spring capability. All right. so, so, so now, if I commit this configuration, I've enabled segment routing in the IGP under, so regardless of whether I'm using a North Star controller or not, I've actually have now segments that can be generated and distributed by the IGP, and, and we'll look at those. And then now I've also added a few extra knobs to allow the North Star controller to actually provision and monitor and maintain segment routed LSPs on this ingress node. So let's take a look at what we'll see. I'm going to run a show ISIS database command focusing on VMX1. I'm going to hope you have to spell it right every time. Uh, I'm going to throw a detail at that to give us a little bit more information. I'm going to, I'm going to see stuff here now. I can see my IPv4 index value. It's, it, it's set to 101. I see my, my node segment blocks. R remember, we, we specified 800,000 know, as, our, as our label start value, and we specified a range of 4,000, so it displays the labels that are available. And these are values that you want to configure the same on all of the nodes in your segment routing domain. And, and, and this VMX1 node, now this is where you can kind of go back to that diagram I was showing you. Uh, this VMX1 node has two adjacencies in, in ISIS, one to the P1 node and one to the P2 node, right? And, and so I can also see the adjacency SIDs. Now remember, I statically configured those. Right? And, and so these values are distributed, and this is what removes RSVP or LDP from an MPLS you know, label switch path environment because I can use now the IGP to distribute these, these segment IDs, the node SIDs and the adjacency SIDs and prefix SIDs, and then we can use these as labels, right? Instead of having RSVP or LDP generate these for us. And so this is one of the, the, the nice things, I guess, about segment routing. I have a... Uh, this is the P1 node that I'm connected to. Let me run a show route table MPLS.0. You know, this is this is kind of a transit router, and, and I'm just showing you that the the other nodes have already been configured for this for this learning byte, and, and I just want you to understand that the node SIDs and the adjacency SIDs are distributed by the ISIS protocol around the domain. So so I see, you know, 800,101. Well, that's the node SID for the VMX1 router that, that P1's connected to. And, and, and the node SIDs and the adjacency SIDs for all of the other, you know, kind of routers in the domain have been distributed. And so this is how, you know, segment routing can kind of remove the signaling requirements of, you know, RSVP and LDP because the, the, the SIDs, the node SIDs and the adjacency SIDs are, are automatically distributed for you. Let me go back to the VMX1 node. There was a, a command I actually wanted to, to run and I forgot about. Let me show you the route that VMX1 has to the VMX2 node. And it'll actually have a couple of routes now. Um, it, it had the route in the inet.0 table that was there before we even turned segment routing off. Right, that's how traffic was forwarded. That's the only route I had available. But now that I've enabled segment routing, I automatically have segment IDs generated that I've learned you know, through, through the IGP. And, and so now I have labeled ISIS route to the 172.20.20.2 node. That, that's the VMX2 router's router ID. 
and, and I can see the label operation that I would perform is to push the 800,102 because BMX2's node SID is, is 102. And based on the start label range, all nodes are able to calculate every other node's SID. Right? So these are kind of some things you'd look at after you have segment routing configured and enabled. And enabled right? So this learning bike focuses on configuring segment routing support on Juno's platforms. And remember, we did add a couple of knobs uh, to enable the BMX1 node to interoperate with external path computation elements such as the North Star controller. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.